All right, well, welcome to another edition of uh, Jacques Talk. And today, Benny, I hope you feel special. This is the first one we've done here in the big OTT room here. I feel a little special then I'm honored. First time, first time for everything they say, right? <laughs> yeah, first time for everything. Yes. And, uh, and great for you to be here today. And, and seriously, uh, when I think of accomplished athletes in the great history of Louisiana State University, Benny Brazil, I'm looking at your resume, okay? So you're a 2004 Olympian, five-time national champion, 14-time NCAA All-American. You're the LSU school record holder in the 400 hurdles, the 400-meter uh, relay, your coaching career as well. And uh, I'm gonna bring up some of the, uh, the video here. Uh, there you are now as a coach. You just finished your 10th video, 10th uh, uh, season, excuse me, with the team. And by the way, you played football, wide receiver for the LSU football team, uh, part of the 2003 national championship team, and then uh, part of the 2002 NCAA outdoor uh, national championship team and indoor in 2004. Just, it's too long, man. Your resume is too long for me to read today. <laughs> I'm blessed, Jack. I'm blessed, man. And it's kind of funny you go through all that. You've been here the whole way too. So, hey, it's pretty That's cool, right. huh? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I can't call you no man because if I do that, I'm even older. But uh, how about this moment right here? What's this moment like for you and Eugene, Oregon, winning the national title? Man, that moment there is like, it's, it was a very special moment, but it wasn't about me. You know what I mean? The special moment is for Coach Shaver. That's what we all did this for. I mean, you guys know Coach Shaver been in this game for 17 years as a head coach and all the accomplishments he's done. And that was one of our goals from the whole coaching staff to get Coach Shaver's championship. So that's what we all grinded for this whole time from the administration to, uh, I mean, our, our, our godly, our trainers, our managers, everybody. The whole goal was to give Coach Shaver a championship, and that's what that was about. So that's what made that special. Yes. And go through the whole process. That's Coach Shaver right there. Coach, uh, Coach was uh, an assistant from 1996 to 2004 um, under Pat Henry during those years, and during that time won 12 national championships as an assistant coach. And, but I, I think this perhaps is his most special. Got to be one of the most special for him. Got to be, Jack. I mean, at the same time, you know, all the work he put in. And he came close so many times. And he has won a couple championships during this time. But on the man's side, it was his first one. I thought that was a special thing to do. And I think when he hired me 10 years ago, I know that was always my main goal, to get Coach Shaver a championship the best I can. And to see it happen was a beautiful thing. And, uh, two, last year was a big what if for you guys as well. You know, I mean, I, I think there was a lot of what ifs on the LSU campus last year between – uh, the LSU softball team, the uh, beach volleyball was number one, mm -hmm. and then the track and field, both the men and the women, you guys were number one. We could be talking about a back-to-back -back situation. We really could, but at the same time, you know, one thing we always learn here, LSU control what you control, and some of the things were just out of our hands, man. But at the end of the day, it happened last year. We had to move forward and focus on this year, which was a hard thing to do, but we went out there and made it, came through at the end, so that's all that matters. You go to church on Sunday? Uh, yes, sir. I go to church on Sunday. I believe in God. <laughs> what they say, uh, count your blessings. Count your and, uh, blessings. We count our blessings. <laughs> don't, and, uh, don't say the things I don't have, right? Yeah, no, you got control of. That's what's important, man. And we had control of our destiny. And that's what we did. And we went out there and showed it. What, uh, as we take a look at you here, what, what have you gotten out of this, this, this coaching thing? Did, were you thinking as you were competing that I'm going to coach one day? Man. I, you know, it just came to me one day, Jock. And when I see that picture that right there with Sean, I can't believe that. Like, basically, the first time I won a national championship was when I was a freshman. And Sean Burrell's a freshman, and he wins it as the team's titled in. So it's kind of funny how it circles around like that and pretty weird. But at the same time, when I saw that picture with Sean, it's a special thing to be able to – I never was able to be a 400-meter intermediate hurdle champion at the NCAA. So I think that was pretty huge for him to do it on his first try as a freshman was really huge. But we all put in the work for that. As far as like, you know, we believe one team, one heartbeat on the track team, you know, everybody contributes all parts of it. So it takes a village to raise a child and we really believe that. And uh, speaking of uh, Sean Squirrel Burrell from Zachary, Louisiana, first career national title uh, with a world U-20 record time of uh, 47.85 seconds. Uh, that is second in LSU history to Benny Brazel, 47.67. <laughs> Uh, so, Benny, you are still the GOAT in that regard, but this young man here is a freshman to uh, step forward and do what he did this year. Not even close. Uh, the guy is a very team player. That's number one. And, you know, it's kind of hard to find athletes like that these days. That's unselfish, uh, all about the team, and he's really about the team, and it can show out there. You see how he works and grinds every day. He does all the little things, man, and this guy here, I can't brag. I can't say much about this kid. I mean, he does so much. He does all the things right. 
And at the end of the day, Sean's the type of guy you want four more Sean's on your team. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think I read up on him. Wasn't he doing uh, shorter distance? Uh, he was He was a 400 guy as well, you know what I'm saying? But he did. He played around with the sprint hurdles in high school, but that's what's special about this. He never ran the 400 hurdles. But once he got to college, he said, Coach, I want to run the 400 hurdles. And make a long story short, he worked at it and grinded it, and now he's the NCAA champ. So that's all on him. I, I have to imagine that going from, what, 100, 110 meters he's, to he's, that, that's a that's huge a, jump. That's a huge jump, you know, and for him to go out there and be that solid in the 400 hurdles is an amazing thing to do. You get gassed if you're not ready. Oh, right? you sure will, but he's ready <laughs> for all that gas. So he's the type of guy built for it. So, uh, so yeah, we talked about Sean Squirrel Burrell. Uh, let's see here if I can go through these uh, – these videos here, and uh, while, while we're talking about it too, you coach the women as well. Yes, sir. And look, the women finished sixth in America, yes. okay? Like we're talking about the College World Series right mm -hmm. now, what a big deal it is to go to the College World mm -hmm. Series. Those are the top eight teams in the country. Gotcha. So for you to finish sixth, I mean, this is a big accomplishment for them as well. I mean, it's a big accomplishment, but at the same time, I won't you know, be fake with you. At the end of the day, it's LSU and the standard is championships. So mm -hmm. those ladies know what was at stake, and we felt kind of sorry for them, especially with all the things they went through, especially this year. And even at the meet, they went through a lot of things that they had no control over, so we felt sorry for them on that aspect of it. But at the end of the day, this is LSU where it's championship or bust. What, what happened? Uh, we just had a couple injuries happen with some of the girls and little tweets and like there and things you can't really control, Jock. But at the end of the day, there's no excuses for that. Mm -hmm. And things happen, you just got to be the next person up. And they finished strong as they could, and we're proud of them for that, and I think that's what all that matters. Awesome. So this guy, Terrence Laird, too. So Terrence Laird, this guy racks up 20 and a half points, uh, national title in the 4 by 100 meter relay and the 100 meters, also took second in the 200 meters. Uh, what's special about this kid? Team money reminds me kind of a shun. Both were team players. they all about the team. And one thing I learned, when you're about the team, the individual blessings will come, you know what I mean? So these guys are so unselfish, and that's what makes these guys so great. These guys work hard at practice, they do all the little things right. And the, on the track and off the track as well, in the classroom as well. But at the same time, these guys are big time team players, and you gotta have guys like that on your team. You know, in track and field, it, it's so unique. You're part of a team, right? Mm -hmm. But still, you, you kind of feel like you're out there by yourself sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's like kind of like being a golfer. I get or it. It's a little different. A little, little bit, that, a lot yeah. more uh, physically taxing. Totally agree. But uh, how, how is how, just what is it like to be a track athlete? Um, a track athlete can be a little bit different. I mean, of course, it's an individual sport, they say. But I think when you're trying to accomplish a team title, it comes about to, to the team. So I think if you've got unselfish guys on your team that's trying to get the championship for the team no matter what, the individual accomplishments will come, Jock, and that's pretty yeah. much how that goes. But when you're more for the team, the great things will come. Well, and, and certainly, I mean, there's been, it, there's, there's a lot of layers to yeah. track, right? You got national champions who don't win national championships as mm -hmm. a team and there stuff like that. But certainly, um, this is the best everyone has felt around there in, uh, what, 19 years? I totally agree. And to dominate <laughs> like that was a big thing to do. And But at the, at the end of the day, I mean, we wasn't surprised. Even with these guys goes from the beginning of the season to September. They, cause we always start practice the day after Labor Day, and that was the first meeting was about winning the championship, you know. And they got it done. So kudos to all those guys. So Javon Harrison, uh, winning his sixth straight NCAA title, clearance of uh, what seven feet seven inches, more than seventy five, uh, and then going back to the NCAA comp since the two thousand nineteen outdoor meet, he's six and zero between the long jump and the high jump. Listening to uh, Coach Shaver talk, he said that. That's unique. You don't get a high jumper and long jumper combo. Big time unique. Uh, you might as well go ahead and crown Javon now one of the greatest athletes to ever come through LSU. Track and field, you got to give it to him. He'll be a first battle LSU Hall of Famer. I said it. So at the end of the day, some of the things that guy does, you can't coach him, man. Jock, he's a really special athlete, and he gets it done on the class, in the classroom as well. So, I mean, that's, I could dim him for that too. And he's another one of those guys. It's a team player. It's about the team. As you can see, as he out there jumping, you see some highlights, he's doing his thing, he's cheering for the other guys while they're running across the track, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So that's really huge, you got to have that team mindset, and I think that's really huge for that guy. And he's one of those team player guys, we love Javon Adele. Yeah, I remember when uh, Sean Burrell was winning his competition, yeah. his, his 400 meters. It's, yeah, yeah, all these guys was like that. I mean, another guy, you're going to probably talk about Zurio, Javelin Thor, right? Well, I'll tell you what's special about him. I mean, Zurio, yeah, he won the Javelin on his last throw, but before that last throw, people don't know, at the same time, he's talking with Coach Greg the whole time. What place are we in? What place Ray Vaughn in? What I got to, you know, boom, boom, boom. As he's competing in his own way. And to go out there and do that on the last throw for the team is huge. Jock says a lot. Says a lot about a guy. Uh, I know you're not the head coach. No. But 
<laughs> you're not the head coach. And I don't want to speak out of turn here, but I've seen over the years, you know, the facilities, right? Yes, facilities sir. are important yeah. to your program. And so mm -hmm. we saw a new LA Box Stadium be built. We saw a new LSU Tiger Park be built. We saw a new tennis facility get built. We saw the gymnastics get a brand new building. Um, and it seemed like track and field was kind of low on the pecking order. It's been like that, but I think it's always been that way with us. But we always had that grind no matter what. We're going to just use what you give us, and we're going to make something out of it. And you see what we made out of a national championship. So at the end of the day, we know how the facilities are. I mean, we know that. They know that at the end of the day. But, I mean, there's no read for going back and forth complaining about it. Either we're going to get it done or not. But if we still have the job to do, and that's put it LSU first and win championships. So that's yeah. what it comes down to. And Coach Shaver know that already. And we know Coach Shaver deserves a whole much better. We know that. At the end of the day, I'm going, I mean, you're saying things about me, but I feel like this segment has got to be about Coach Shaver. I mean, all the work that he's put in, and I feel like in the future when local, you know, business is looking at this, Coach Shaver needs his own commercial, too. He needs that. He deserves something. <laughs> we got to start giving Coach Shaver his flowers so, now. Let's not wait till we resign. Let's do it right now. He deserves it. You know what I mean? So, so, so who would Coach Shaver be a pitch man for? So uh, we can't do Raising Canes because nah, Coach O's got that, and you guys got to stay lean. Yeah, so. we don't eat that. No disrespect, <laughs> Mr. Todd. No disrespect. Maybe a bottle of some sort of local water. I don't or care. Water, a wine. I don't care. It's something. Coach Shaver's a good handyman as well, too. He loves fixing things. So yeah. I know a lot of things we have problems at the track. Coach Shaver fixes it on his own. You know what I mean? Well, so, you know, and I think he's a good pitch man, too. He's yeah. got that very distinguished Come gray on. hair. He's got that good tan going Give on. Give Coach you know, Shaver his flowers now. So we got to do that. Get him a commercial or something. He deserves <laughs> that. Let's not wait till he resigned. Then we go back. No, let's do it now. He earned it, and he deserves that. So, so where can Coach and you and everyone go from here? Uh, you know, th could this be kind of like breaking the dam, uh, you know, breaking the seal? No, nah, we're not breaking it. We, we want more. We're not satisfied. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we finished Nationals winning the championship. We back on the phone talking recruits the next day. We wanted more, and we didn't finish good on the girls' side. We, I mean, at the end of the day, that's not what we want to do. So we got to go back and get vengeance of that well. So we got to work hard to put a girls' championship together. So at the end of the day, we're never satisfied. And Coach Shaver always installed that in me in my 10 years being here with him. We always want more, and that's what it is. Uh, recruiting track and field. Talk to me about that, because that is a lot different than, say, football. We go get some guys from Louisiana, yeah. Texas, but we're good, you yeah. know, right? You're going to Jamaica and where? Worldwide. I go all <laughs> over the world recruit kids. But let's, let's, I want to say something about that as well, too, and I blame myself. Um, this is why the first year we didn't have a football player part of the track team. And I think, I mean, I take the blame for that. But we always usually have one football guy on the team, you know what I mean? So I think we got to kind of do better on our part, too, is getting it together and just communicate and get to a sport athletes because we always have. You know, we had Kerry last mm -hmm. year. He was the last one. And, of course, it's a little different, but at the same time, we got to get better to grow an LSU football player on the track team. It's only right. It's always been that way. Uh, what are the challenges? Uh, the challenges is them want to do it. You know what I mean? Jack, I mean, the guy, wants, he has to really want to do it. And if you mm -hmm. go look at the resume from the past years we had, the football players we had that ran track, these were guys who wanted to run track. So at the end of the day, we can't beg them to run or force them to run. They got to want to do it. And of course, I don't want nobody out there that don't want to do it anyway, because right. that's not going to help us out at the end. I got to be somebody that's really locked in and really want to, you know, do some great things. But I thought that would have been really special for a football player to have been on the track team. He could have won a national championship this year. Yeah, you could have. If Kerry would have been there, he would have two, like yes. you. He would have been Benny Brazil. Yeah, well, he was going, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he would have. Uh, what about, I mean, you played football. Yes, sir. He was a seventh round pick. Yes, sir. How do you think he's gonna? You think he's I gonna think make Kerry's the most gonna of do it? a good job. Uh, at the end of the day, he gotta you know get his attitude right. Just continue to grind, and be quiet. Just grind. Do your work. Do the little things. Uh, extra film study. Ask questions. Learn more about your crowd. Be a student of the game all around. You know what I mean? But I feel like he'll do a good job at that. He's ready. He's got the mind right. He'd be okay. He'd be fine. I think when you click on his Twitter page, I think it just says cocky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can be cocky, but you gotta have results. Yeah. And I think that's the difference these days with some of the generation. I mean, you can be cocky all you want. Like, Shikari can be cocky, right? Yeah. She, when you've done the job, you can be cocky. When you haven't done nothing yet, you can't have that type of mindset. There's no way. Yeah. No way. And yeah. I'm one of those coaches, too. I'm not going to let it happen. I'm going to let you know about that. You know, uh, 2005, 6, mm -hmm. 2, 3, doesn't seem that long ago. <laughs> but uh, it, it is really, uh, what, what challenges do you see these days? in the, the social media, mm -hmm. the Instagram, the mm -hmm. all these things where everyone's got to build a brand, a brand. so totally to speak. And, and, uh, and they forget about what, what you get, they forget what got you to the brand. And that's the problem. I think it's about results these days. It's not about the grind. It's not about the process. You know what I mean? And I feel that you see it all the time on social media. I see a lot of people talk as much as they want to talk on there. But if you're going to talk on there, you got to back it up. 
it's events you're just talking you know what i mean be honest with you jack the first time i seen this uh happen when it first started going uh it was university of texas football right they would always get beat right but then i see them on monday like just we talking like whoa like shut up you lost like you didn't win and that's the problem now it's like it's it's it's, it's cool to do that you know what i mean and i'm yeah. coming old school you know who my coach was so at the end of the day he didn't play that type of stuff there's no way you got to do something then you can talk but these days, it's like you can you can just keep talking without doing no results, and it's okay, and that's the problem. Do you have a good Nick Saban story? When I got he, too many of them, man. When he really chewed you out? Oh, I got chewed out. Uh, all right, so I give you one story. Okay. Make a long story short, um, he was prepared for me to be able to uh, train in the summertime, right? This is when I made the Olympic team. So um, basically, he finds that I'm going to Olympic trials. He cusses me out, boom, 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 going off on me. I need you here, boom, 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 boom. Cool, you know, gets on me, whatever. <laughs> well, next thing you know. I make the Olympic team, right? So next thing I know, I seen him on your show. You know what I mean? You ask him a question, talking, how about Benny? You know what I feel about Benny? We're so proud for Benny, he made the Olympic team. Like, wow, you just cussed me out for that. You know what I mean? And I never forget too, once I did go to the Olympics, Coach Shaver could tell you the story as well. As soon as I was finished, he called Coach Shaver. Now, when are you sending him home? <laughs> so where were, where were the Olympics? Athens, in? Greece. Okay. So as soon as I had finished the final race, Coach Shaver called, hey, when is he sending home? Let's send him on back. And so, you, what did you compete in? The 400 hurdles. 400 hurdles. Yes, sir. Going so, so like the second one, you're into your trot to in this thing. Yeah. You know, Coach Saban. There on the you phone. go. Send them back home. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but like I said, you know, I learned a lot from Coach Saban. A lot of the coaches we had here at LSU that I've been through, man, taught me so much, man. But at the end of the day, Coach Saban has been, I've been in the trenches with Coach Saban from the beginning, man. And just to get on yeah. that championship is really special. Yeah. And, you know, and we won't get into all the other stuff. You did play for Coach Miles. Yes, sir. I did you, play with Coach Miles. And play for him. Coach Miles was a good man to me as well, too. You know, I don't judge anybody at the end of the day. I mean, it's none of my business. It is what it is with that. But at the same time, when I, the relationship I had with him was really good. We never had issues. So. Yeah. Well, you flourished under him, yeah, actually. Yeah, big time. I, coach, it was your best year. Hey, and at the end of the day, we trusted each other with that process because it was a problem. I wouldn't even going to go back to my senior for football. I was going to go ahead and just go pro and track. But Coach Miles told me, hey, I don't know you from a can of paint. You don't know me. <laughs> uh, but I want you to come back. Let's try to get this thing figured out. And anything can happen. And I was drafted. So I'm always going to have Coach Miles back for that as well, too. Yeah, I remember... Uh, how, how strong was Jamarcus Russell's arm? Too strong. Yeah. Too strong. Jamarcus' arm was too strong. Coach, uh, I mean, Jamarcus had like a natural talent, man. You guys know that. I mean, one of the best who ever came through LSU to do it, man. Yeah. He just didn't get a championship. It, it, it was like, uh, you, you hear like these stories, like he was Paul Bunyan or yeah, something like he this. Was, like he, he would throw the ball like from his knees. He could throw it like 60, 70 yards or something. Easy. Easy. Yeah. But like I said, it was the culture. The football culture, the grind, the team aspect of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's the difference between track at times, you know? Some guys don't understand that team camaraderie like that. That's why we love to have football guys come, because they get it. They understand, and some track guys can use that for example. Uh, how does it make you feel? Because I looked and I see, like, the Andrew Whitworths of the world and everything happy for you right now to win a national title again. It's huge because we come to LSU together. I mean, with Andrew and I, Marcus Spears giving me a shout-out, on that's awesome because at the end of the day, it's the LSU brotherhood no matter what, Jack. We always have it for each other, anything we do. We don't even have to have the best relationship. At the end of the day, we're gonna always be for LSU, the brotherhood, no matter what. So if a war broke out, we're gonna always stick together no matter what. So we always have each other's it's, back, and that's just how it has to be. We never turn against our LSU brothers no matter what. We went to the end. It's like a, it's like a real family. Like, yeah, like a they big always time. say like, okay, yeah. you know, these brothers, they yeah. fight. But if you try to step in between them. It's gonna be some issues. <laughs> we will come yeah. to you. So that's just how it is. But yeah. for the most part, like you was talking about the championship, man, like we saying, I mean, we already know this past year, we haven't really had many positive things, you know, for the most part with LSU, you know, the negative things have been, but we just wanted to, Coach Shea wanted to go out there and win that championship to bring some positive back to the university in some kind of way, man. So that's pretty much huge, man. That's what it's about. When did you decide to grow this beard, by the way? So the beard started, I want to say last year when we were going to nationals, whatever, indoor, but we didn't get the run. So I had to keep it. I didn't want to just cut it, so I stuck yeah. with it, and now we won a championship with it. I don't think I'm ever cutting it now. Uh oh. So I don't know. Are you just gonna trim it, or? I don't know. I don't know, Jack. I don't know how I feel. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I couldn't tell you. Look at those dudes right there. Awesome. We call it Yellow U right there. Yellow U. All the bright skin guys. <laughs> okay. Yellow U. Yellow U. <laughs> Things yeah. many can say and I can't. Yeah. How about yellow that? U. Yellow U. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
And by the way, Benny still keeps in top condition. I drive to work. I drive by River Road. I see Benny up there jogging. How many how many miles you jog a day? That's about five and a half. About five yeah. and a half. About a, about a, about a forty-five hour minute hour run every day. Now I'm a wimp. I get out there. I may be I might be <laughs> maxed out about three miles, two and a half. This time of year, you better go like before nine o'clock. No, no way. It, it gets tough in the summertime, so we call it mental toughness. And at times, you'll see Coach O run out there in the daytime. So, like, basically what we'll do, like, you know, we usually go in the morning time, but we switch it summertime because it's so hot. We want to go at the hottest part of the day. So if it's, like, around 11, 30 or 12, it's going to challenge you mentally. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it just shows you at the end of the day, if you're going to come at me, you better come with everything because I feel like mentally I'm, a, I'm able to take it somewhere you're not willing to take it. Yeah. And that was, that was the mentality, too, in August when you're playing football, there right? There it is. And practicing and... There it is. It's the same thing. It's the same motto. It hasn't changed. And Coach Saban always preached that mental toughness. And I, to this day, I remember that. You're not a football coach, but I'm just curious, you being on campus and everything, uh, so you're, you're around, you see 2019 go down, it's the greatest thing we've ever seen. 2020, a lot of struggles for different reasons between COVID and uh, the racial tensions and a lot of other things going on. Yes. Five and five, uh, they, they win their last two games, they go five and five. Yep. How are those guys gonna bounce back? Um, They'll bounce back hard. I mean, like I said, again, it's the LSU family, brotherhood, right? So of course, we part of the football team. We gonna cheer those guys on. We wish them nothing but the best, the staff, but they'll bounce back. They know what's at stake. They see the talent that we have. We just went through a lot of things last year. I mean, it is what it is, but we gotta just keep fighting. And if you're an LSU Tiger, you fight to the end. Yeah. And that's just what it's all about. When you're at LSU and you're 18, 19, 20 years old, mm -hmm. I mean, I used to go to those games as a kid and be nervous, you know. I can't imagine if I was, like, actually impacting the outcome of mm -hmm. the game and if I fumbled at the five-yard line or if I missed a 35-yard field goal to end the game and had to walk around on campus on Monday while yeah. people were staring at me and, you know, that guy missed the field goal yeah. or whatever. A lot of pressure. It's pressure. At but, that that, age. But, but at the end of the day, Jai, when you sign that letter of intent to come here, yeah. that's what you signed up for. And if you come to LSU, that's just how it goes. And if you can't handle that, don't come here. Go on the portal, leave. Like, it's pressure when you come to LSU. I don't care what sport it is. Like you're not coming here to be mediocre. You're yeah. coming here to win championships. So yeah. that ain't the mindset you got. I feel like you shouldn't have to. Don't. You just might be a place you don't want to yeah, be. When at. the lights come on, some people. Yeah. And then some, some people. Yeah, there it is. Cower. Yeah. yeah. Got to attack it no matter what. I remember at the beginning of my couple of years at LSU playing football. You know, my girls won as great at the beginning. They got better at the end. But I never forget one game. I dropped the ball. Right, Jack. After the game, I got to my locker. I had butterfingers in my locker. Candy, right? <laughs> so I couldn't be sensitive, you know what I mean? Hey, I'm gonna call my mom, I'm gonna call administration, I'm gonna what? transfer. No, you gotta fight it out, you gotta get better. And it was the truth, I dropped the ball, I did have butter fingers. What game was that? I forgot, I think it might have been a South Carolina game. You were a junior? I or? think I might have been a red shirt, sophomore. Okay. And it was a post, I dropped a wide open ball, like, no excuses. So, and yeah. I had butter fingers in my locker after. So yeah. that's what comes with it. I felt to get my freshman year in track. I had a very bad like track meet one time, and Walter Davis, great. So one of the greatest of all time. Uh, got on me, held me accountable, you know, and I had to take it, you know. So that's what comes with it. I couldn't cry about it, complain, go tell my parents. I had to take it, and he told the truth. You're not getting it done. And yeah. make a long story short. Well, that's what that's what I've seen too. Yeah. Is that um, you know the transfer portal for Joe Burrow for people who graduate, yeah. who were there for two or three years. But the, but the freshman who comes in and gets his butt kicked yeah. and needs to, okay, I got my butt kicked, yeah. but I'm going to get better and I'm going to stick around. There it is. Not, I'm going to hit the eject button nah, and go to another school. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Now, certain situations I understand, but yeah. for the most part, just because it's not going, yo, nah, it doesn't work. Because I mean, What are you teaching them? That, that's not life lessons, you know what I'm saying? When you get in the real world, me and you both know it doesn't work that way. Right. Not at all. You got to learn the first adversity at an early age. And yeah. don't run from it. Embrace it. And that's one thing I teach all my athletes. Embrace that adversity. It's okay. Is the, is the transfer portal something track and field? Are you tapping um, into this? Are you seeing it? Uh, I'm seeing it how it is, but at the end of the day, it just depends. You know what I mean? But it's, it's, there, it's there for all the sports. Yeah. I mean, it's open to everybody at the end of the day. So you got to, you know, be careful what you pick and what you don't. You know what I mean? Right. But at the end of the day, the standard at LSU is a standard. So it is what it is. I don't care who you are. All right. So in, in, in closing here, as we talk about... Uh, your coach and, and the year that you had, just, uh, just your final thoughts. My final thoughts when I see that video right there, that's just a special moment for Coach Shaver to get his first man's championship as a head coach. That was the goal from day one, man. A lot of us, most, all of us assistant coaches, that was the goal from the beginning. Like I told you, medical staff, shout out to all those uh, people, Vanessa, Tori, um, our managers, Rissa, um, Camelia, all those people that put in the work, man. Our director, Box, Andy, from day one, it was always putting it in there for Coach Shaver, and that's what we did, and we got him there, and that's a beautiful moment. We'll never forget that. Good deal. 
And, uh, and once again, the ladies, they're motivated in the offseason to do better next year. Oh, yeah, it will be better next year. I guarantee it. Good deal. And, uh, and there he is, folks, uh, Benny Brazell, national champion. He was on the football team in 2003 when they beat Oklahoma and won it all. Yeah. Uh, also mm -hmm. part of uh, outdoor uh, national, national championship championships. 2002. Yes, big time. And, and Shaver, we trust. Don't forget. Are you in the Hall of Fame yet at LSU? Not yet, man. Jack, I, I'm not good enough, I guess, to make it yet, man. <laughs> okay, well, enough. the campaign starts right now. Okay, I appreciate that. For you that. To, to, to get in there. So, I appreciate uh, that. Thanks so much for coming no down, problem. man. No problem. All right, good All seeing right. you. You too.